Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name's Emma Fave, and today I'm here to teach you about what could be wrong with your paint, or at least what you may think is wrong with your paint. So, have you ever tried out a new pigment and the texture is really kind of sandy and clumpy? Well, I remember doing that for the first time. I had switched from my Winsor Newton Cotman paints to professional tubes of Winsor Newton, and I remember trying the permanent mauve, and it did not have the same consistency that my Cotman mauve did. And I was quite sure there was something wrong with this paint. Turns out there wasn't. It was just a granulating pigment. Now, if you're new at this, you may be like, what the heck does that mean? Well, let me give you kind of an easier breakdown of what granulating paints are. So watercolor paints are made with pigments and then usually a binder like gum Arabic. There are different formulas, um, but that is typically what they are made up of. And different pigments actually have different properties. You're gonna have some organic pigments and you might have some inorganic pigments. And basically what the difference is, is that you're gonna get some pigments that are ground up really fine. And then when you use them as watercolors, they provide a very smooth kind of seamless surface where everything is dispersed evenly. But then when you have a pigment that is a granulating pigment, the particles in it are a little bit more irregular. They can be not clumpy, but just, you know, they're not the same consistency throughout the pigments, which in turn creates a granulating paint. Now, I remember when I was taught this, I was like, well, why would anyone want that? Turns out it can provide pretty cool textures and characteristics to your paintings that other paints can't. Now, I believe it's completely about your own style and what you like. And to be quite honest, I'm not the biggest fan of granulating paints. I have developed a bit more of a love for them over time, but definitely when I first started out and I tried granulated pigments for the first time, I was like, I don't get it. What is the point? This just looks inconsistent within my paintings and it just, it looks like a mess. But there are a lot of artists that love them and use them beautifully. So today I'm gonna to show you some examples of what granulating paints look like, maybe how you can use them, and then just a little bit about using them on different papers and mixing them because it does make quite the difference. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple examples of different granulating paints. Um, the first time I really noticed it was when I switched from my Cotman set of Winsor Newton to my professional set. So I ended up getting a bunch of tubes from a viewer and she had used them, but she sent them to me. And the first color I really noticed it with was this permanent mauve. So I had mauve in the Cotman set, which was not granulating. But then when I tried this one out, it seemed like there was something wrong with it. At least that's what I thought at the beginning because I had never used, well, first of all, I didn't use many um, different watercolors to begin with. I had only used my Cotman, so I, I didn't really know much. And I had never used the professional or granulating paints. So I found the way that this mauve behaved compared to my Cotman was very different. And then the other color I really noticed um, it with which I don't have anymore, was Potter's Pink. I loved the hue of the color, but I remember when I used it out of the tube, I was like, what is wrong with this paint? It, it seemed like it couldn't pick up enough pigment, and it was just very, very, like, it was very light and very coarse, and I just thought there was something completely wrong with my paint. And then the mauve one was just not behaving like my Cotman mauve. I don't think I have my my Cotman mauve anymore to show you side by side, but it was just, I thought there was something wrong with it and I never put it in my palette or really use it again. Luckily you can make a mauve by mixing um, a blue and like a pink together, just a bit more on the pinkier side and you can get something very similar. But see how this just seems a little, I mean, it's still drying, but it seems a little uneven. There's a lot of texture in there. 
and it's not sitting as well as something like, let's say, I here I have some My Mary Blue paints. I forget what this one is called. This is actually pretty close to mauve, but see how it's a lot more flat looking, which I like better. I don't typically love granulating watercolors. I know a lot of people love them, but I typically don't. They just seem to be a bit more even when with granulating paints, you get a bit more of that texture and unevenness, which can be really great for, you know, some landscapes to provide texture to your, you know, rocks or water or whatever you want. Um, I tend to like this look a lot more. That's just me, but there are a lot of people that love granulating paint. So these are different brands, different colors in general, but this is kind of just showing you an example between a granulating and non-granulating in um, the same kind of uh, hue. So the other color that you're going to see this a lot with is ultramarine. I don't know if I've ever really come across an ultramarine paint that isn't granulating. I think because of ultramarine, oh, ultramarine, ultramarine's pigment, um, it's just naturally, I think it's an organic pigment. The particles are just a lot um, more coarse and irregular. So you tend to get across most brands um, a very granulating ultramarine. Now, where you might come into trouble with using an ultramarine, I love the hue of ultramarine, I love it. But when mixing with other colors, things that you might notice, let's see, I'm gonna mix this green gold and maybe I'll do like a purple mixture too, just to kind of show you with ultramarine. When you mix with a granulating color, you tend to see a lot of separation once it dries, okay? So this is the My Mary Blue ultramarine. Let's see what it looks like when it dries. Hopefully it shows you what I mean. I feel like this mauve is very granulating. That might be a better kind of example. Maybe I'll mix my mauve with, hmm, maybe like a blue or something. I'll mix it with a non-granulating paint to show you that separation. Let's do this turquoise color. Let's get a bit more mauve. And let's see if we can see that separation in our mix. Okay, because when you mix it, you might go, why can I see like this texture? Why can I see the separation between colors? And it may not be what you're desiring for the look, um, but it happens because you're typically mixing a granulating color with a non-granulating color. So wait till this dries. I can already see it happening with this green mixture with the green gold. You can see little pockets of the dark blue within the green and it actually sometimes provides a really cool mixture. Um, and it may be just the kind of texture that you want for your paintings, but see how flat this is. And then the ultramarine is a lot more textured. You can really see the texture of the paper, um, but it becomes a lot more prominent when it dries. So when mixing a granulating color with a non-granulating color, color, you're going to see a lot of that separation between the colors. So it may not be ideal for mixing. So that's a really um, important piece to know about your pigments that you are using. I know I did create a video recently where I was like, I don't pay attention to pigments. One thing I do kind of pay attention to, um, not necessarily when buying, because I, I tend to buy colors that I am familiar with and I love. I do, you know, tend to look and see if they are granulating because I don't love granulating paints. So where can you find the specifications of a paint? A lot of the times you can find it on the tube. Now it's really difficult to see I'm going to try and come up close. So this is a My Mary Blue Cobalt Blue Deep. And here on the side, it gives you the pigment number. I don't know if you can see that. It's PB74. Then there's a dash and there's a G for granulating and then a dash and then an ST for staining. So staining meaning that it doesn't lift as easily. Um, but it's funny because on my set of My Mary Blue paints, I did a video recently where I swatch them 
So not these greens, these were mixtures that I did at the bottom, um, but this is the set that I have. And I noticed that my ultramarine and cobalt blue were granulating. The cerulean blue was granulating and the cobalt turquoise light was very granulating. But on the actual tubes, the only one that I can see that says granulating is this cobalt blue deep. So actually, no, I lied. The turquoise, sorry, it's called turquoise cobalt. Where's the other one? Yes. So the ultramarine deep, I'm gonna try and show you up close. Okay, so see the pigment number there, PB29. And it just says staining, it doesn't say granulating, but it's very much a granulating color. Pretty sure that's the one. Let me see, the cerulean, the cerulean sky blue is also very obviously granulating. And then here, sorry, you can see PB35 staining and it doesn't say granulating. So I don't know why on some tubes it says it, some tubes it doesn't, um, but you will want to do your research if that is something you want to take into, into consideration um, if you are building a palette of a tube collection. Okay, so keep an eye on that. A lot of brands also have these dot color charts, which are super helpful when picking colors. So this one is the Shinhan watercolors, which I actually really love. And I got this um, trial dot color chart, it has 104 colors. I actually swatched them live. So there is a live video of this. So you can check out of me doing all of them. But it gives you all the specifications of each color. Um, and then there's a little dot of paint that you kind of just put water over and you get to swatch all of the colors. So with these, it's really great. Cause like I said, it gives you all the specifications. So transparency, cause you have different levels. There's transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque and opaque colors. Then the light fastness rating for all of them is there. Um, granulating and staining is in there too. So all the ones that are granulating colors or staining colors will have that little G, can you see that? So like this Davies Gray, which is really beautiful. Um, it tells you that it's opaque because it's all fully colored in. There's like a little legend that kind of tells you what each thing means. The light fastness rating and it's G for granulating, ST for staining, and then the pigment information and then the grade or price of the color of tube. So these are really great if you are interested in um, picking out tubes from a new brand very very helpful to look at because like you can actually get a little glimpse of what they look like and there's some colors that in here that I'm like I love um <laughs> but yeah so I know I had a Winsor & Newton one I think I had a Daniel Smith one and then I have this Shinhan one most brands will have something like this that you can purchase for like sometimes like 11 bucks um you can get them at art stores or even off Amazon I think but those are very helpful so now kind of looking back as this is drying I just want to get a little bit more up close okay do you see the separation in these mixes? Like you can obviously see that separation between the blue and the green gold. Same here, you can get that little hint of pink with the blue and then the mauve with the, did we do with the blue, I think? But yeah, very obviously granulating, not granulating. See how flat that is? I like this wash better in most cases, but this is also very, very cool. So. Another thing to consider is that when you are testing out um, a granulating paint, it's gonna look different depending on the paper you are using. So this was a cold press paper. This here I have is Saunders Waterford Rough. And then I'm also gonna show you in this hot pressed Paul Rubens, just to show you the difference. Um, because what those particles do is they like to clump together. And if you have kind of peaks and valleys in your paper, you have like a toothy texture, the particles tend to gather towards the little valleys in within the toothy texture. So you'll see a lot more of the separation and granulation in a rough paper. So let's kind of give that a go. So I'm gonna grab my ultramarine here. Then I'm gonna do it with the green gold. Also, I just wanna show you another thing up close, which is really cool. You can see the separation within the mix here. You see the blue and then the green, like it's separating on this plastic palette, which is very interesting. I'm gonna grab this mixture. 
I'm gonna place it on my rough paper. Maybe make it more intense. And actually, you know what? I kind of want to try different levels of each. So if I have more of my ultramarine deep, which is granulating color, just a little bit of my green gold, how will that granulation look? Or it's a bit more on the blue side. And then one that's a bit more on the gold side. Will it be less granulating because you have more of the non-granulating color? There's a lot of testing you can kind of do with this. Okay, so we see that. Then these are pretty saturated. What if we have mostly just water? If it's very watered down. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So a lighter wash. I want to see what that does. And then, hmm, I think that's it for that paper. Let's try it on the Paul Rubens paper. So I wanna do the same kind of thing, okay? So we have our straight ultramarine. Now, hot press paper is a very smooth paper. You're not gonna get that toothy texture with the peaks and valleys. Um, so I'm curious to see how the granulation is gonna look on this. I haven't really noticed or really take, tried to notice. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be interesting to see. And this hot press paper specifically, I find really nice compared to other hot press papers, like even Arches, which I love Arches watercolor paper, but I find this paper tends to act a bit more like a, a cold press, just the way it soaks in a little bit more, which is nice. Um, so this is the only hot press paper that I work on. And I did try and work on a landscape for my Patreon live recently that I did with this paper. The one thing I noticed about this paper that I didn't, I found really tricky to use was the fact that it lifted very easily. So the color lifted off of it. So when I would try and go back to, um, blend a color it would lift the color underneath which was a little frustrating and a little not frustrating but it was just more difficult to work on so that's one thing i found about working on the hot press paper that wasn't ideal i find hot press is really good for uh, illustrations um but yeah so just keep that in mind so now i'm going to just grab my a lot more water make it a really light wash and we're going to let it dry and then see how it reacts and I'm not going to dry it with my my heat tool I'm going to let it dry naturally and we'll come back and see what the differences are okay so now that it's finally dry you can see clearly a difference in between papers both of them had separation but because the hot press paper was a lot smoother you'll see like bigger chunks of separation so you see that the green gold made its way to the outside of this one and there's mostly that ultramarine blue towards the center. And then you get this really kind of funky texture with just the ultramarine where it's bigger kind of areas where it's darker than lighter. Unlike this one where you have kind of evenly dispersed, you know, darker, lighter, darker, lighter. Um, same thing here, just you get a lot of that green that kind of made its way to the edge. Um, when we did use more green gold than the ultramarine you did get a lot less granulating which was very interesting and then with the lighter wash you still again get that same kind of green around the edge it's like the green almost wanted to escape <laughs> um, the blue and then you get kind of like an even wash with this so I feel like if you're not the biggest fan of granulating colors but you want to use them um, or you just only have access to what was in your palette or whatever it is. Um, a smooth kind of hot press paper might be a better idea, but either way, it's very interesting. Like the pattern I'm getting out of this, like the texture here is really cool. Um, I really, I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So I wanna show you a quick example of some handmade granulating paints that I got from a company called Our Car Creations. So you may have seen this video a little while ago, but these handmade watercolors from Art Car Creation are very granulating. And this is the kind of texture that you can get with them. So see, um, this is actually, I think, just one green color that was in the palette. And look at that separation between the dark blue and the light blue. Um, and then this one on the pot 
was really cool. So there are some benefits, not just some, but some really cool textural benefits to using granulating colors. Um, see how the green here, that's like a swatch of that green, which is really cool. Um, there are benefits to using granulating paints. So while for the longest time I was like, why would anyone want these paints? Why would anyone want granulation in their watercolors? I didn't understand it. I didn't really love it. Um, there are some beautiful and quirky characteristics to granulating paints that are really fun and can just add a little bit more of a something something to your paints. So definitely check them out if this seems like something you're interested in. If you are wondering why your paints are doing this, no, they are not broken. This is just the type of paint it is. So enjoy it, play around with it because it might surprise you with more time that you actually experiment with them. So that's about it and I hope it was informative and you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.